Weird Science is the revolution. White Widow number three. When you get into this, and I kind of came up with this theory in my mind that if you have a, like, the recap, if you're going to recap stuff, you can go by how much either an editor thinks that people aren't going to remember you didn't properly set up because a recap page is there to let everybody know what's going on with the story and then, you know, get into it. Also, it, it shows you after two issues of this book, we're on the third issue. This story is so convolutedly crazy that it almost has a, a book length. of It's one of the biggest, longest recaps I've seen because none of the stuff that we saw before made sense. And you end up having to let everybody know what it is to go forward. And it still doesn't make sense. When we get into this issue, it is all over the place. Oh, my white, white widow. I must have said white wolf. White widow, number three, written by Sarah Gailey, art by Alessandro Miracolo, uh, colors by Matt Miller, and letters by VCs. Travis Lanham, we start with a flashback, you know, as if the current stuff isn't confusing. And this flashback is trying to work into the story, but it doesn't really, and you don't like steps from it, because what you have here is Yelena, she is trying to assassinate She Hulk. So she's there going to see Hulk, and you're trying to kill me. No, assassinate. That sounds more impressive. And at this point, when you have Yelena talking, she's talking fine. It's like, I'm telling you, calling an assassination will make it sound more impressive. At points in this, Sarah Gailey remembers, oh, she has a Russian accent and reverts to that in a weird way, then goes back and forgets it again. It's all over the place. But you have in this two things. There's this mentor-mentee thing because you have She-Hulk and her mentee, Marguerite, which we don't know, but that kind of goes into that overall mentor thing that Yelena wants to do with the one assassin. We'll see her later. And that Yelena's there to kill this son. Of Maximo Best. The son is Proximo Best. This seems like it's important until later, the real thing that's important is the daughter of Max. So it doesn't even fit. It, it's so wonky. I don't know where it came from, this uh, this guy. You know, the- okay, what's happening? It's the action scene, but we're going to have others. And at the end, she's like, I'm going to go. And it's just goof. Jim, the dialogue balloons. I, I lost count of dialogue balloons on. I, I couldn't get through them. Could you? Flip it, Nick. I ended up, it took me forever. So all this again is that Yelena's like, oh, that's your mentee? I see that you give her a lot of, t- oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm going to be a mentor too. I don't think that's good. Oh, well, I'm going to go kill this guy that you're trying to protect. And it's just for goofs. So then we go, we go to the regular book. And again, mm. there's so many things that are like left open and dangling and things that like names that you won't know and things like that in the town of Idlehaven where White Widow has gone to kind of retire but has run into a a bad over-the-top corporation armament that seems like the evil Amazon slash, you know, Walmart type deal that is collecting assassins by giving them, you know, armament upgrades to if they lost a leg, they'll replace the leg. It just doesn't make sense, and it's just, it's not a great story, but you have Yelena's trying to break into this armament because they ended up getting evicted from their townhouses. They got eviction notices. The one girl that's in the apartments with them, this girl is Griffin, a tech person. So you got her kind of working like an oracle type deal through this. The but girl what, in the chair. Yeah. yeah, in the chair. So what Yelena is doing, she seems to think that since they were evicted, if they go in and burn up the eviction notices at this HQ, then they're not evicted anymore. That really seems like the plan at first. That's how it works, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah I, I thought so. But the, <laughs> the idea of here and now, especially a tech person telling Yelena this, that has no clue that if we just go and wipe out some, there's never going to be backups. And really, nobody will remember. They'll just forget that we were evicted because the, the paper and the things. Are, so after that, and does do that, then says, oh, I'm going to take down the main guy. Hamish, which we didn't even know. Where is he? Oh, he's on the top floor. Okay, I'll go get him. She then goes up to this top floor. I, I don't even know how to explain. Hamish, the what's supposed to be the the leader, he's kind of a cybernetic implants connected to almost like Axl Rose in the Welcome to the Jungle video. He's there with these big banks of 
TVs and computer screens. I thought it was the lawnmower man, Jim. Remember him? <laughs> Why what, what is this? Seriously? I don't know. Come on. And, and he's there. And what the joke here is that it looks like he's like the one who's in command of social media stuff. So you have like, he's. I guess the joke is he's the one who gets us all like click baited up and things like that. Cause even one of the things is hot dog, a, a sandwich, B tug. I'm like, stop it. Stop it. This book is bad. The art's okay. But she realizes, okay, this guy isn't the leader. Kicks him in the head. I don't know what that does. Maybe he unplugs the lawnmower man. Then she's walking down the street. She runs into the guy, Rowan. I don't even rem- I don't remember I these no characters. Idea who we is. have reviewed each issue. There's only two issues up to this point. We're not that dumb. We're dummies. We're not that dumb. Feels like there's been twenty five different characters, Jim, isn't it? Something. And none of them end up being any sort of oh, I remember that person. Memorable, or I don't, yeah. Don't yeah. know their names. The only thing we knew at one point to, to jo- is that Griffin, though I didn't remember the name, her mom. We didn't know it was her mom until we found out it was her mom. And that's kept, but that's it. I don't remember these characters. <laughs> I don't. And this Rowan works for this armament. He's out at what looks to be 2 a.m. He's there trying to get medicine for his chronic fatigue syndrome. Why do we need to know this? It's unbelievable. Does, does this seem like I'm making sh- stuff up? It's random. It's completely random yes. again. That's He's right. going yeah. to get, and you even have to have, it's like, oh, I got treatment for this. Uh, editors know what he's saying is chronic Explain, fatigue syndrome. I'm like, it. why? Why do I? All he has to say is, I'm getting my medicine and even play. If if it's me, because he seems like he's mind controlled, which probably that's what we find out the medicine is anyway. Yeah. But just say that I'm here to get my medicine. Oh, what? What's wrong with you? What medicine? You know what? I'm not really sure, but I know I have to get my medicine. I just got an alert. Just do that. Then suddenly you end up with these three characters that show up on a, a scooter. And they have these blue men, and they're there. We're going to bring you down. We're here to assassinate Rowan because we're armament people, and it doesn't make sense. And I'm saying it doesn't make sense just overall. Rowan in the book, he's confused. Why are they trying to kill me? It ends up that this town it is a training ground to assassinate people. This doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. You know, he, at one point you got Rowan saying... There must be a misunderstanding. These are my co-workers, and they're trying to kill him, and it, it, we have no idea why. Yeah. Also, just to put, you keep throwing the joke in about a dental plan. Dental plan. <laughs> like, oh, God, is it that joke again? This isn't oh, working. Jesus. And so, Elena is going to fight. Now, Elena and Griffin, they've set up what now becomes the running joke of these knives, which could have been cool. But you joke about it too much, and it becomes too much of a focus of the knives, you know, the sting and the bite. And I'm going to do this. And should I name it that? How do I do this? What's my catchphrase? I'm like, I don't really care. Just go with it. And when you get to a point, and I hope I see the point, when we get to a point where Elena actually does spell out everything that's like the stakes of all this, it's such a laughable joke that it, it seems like it's not real. But while they're fighting these three assassins, Elena realizes, oh, man, I think this one is Baxter. And I'm like, who? Baxter? That ends up being the mentee. That she's been mentoring about, hey, what are you doing? Sorry about Wolverine and me. It's the beginning of the whole series. But who remembers anything in this? And she says, oh, Armament, and I signed up because they gave me a new leg. We knew this, but this just kind of happens. And they're like, oh, we're just trying to kill Rowan. It's our training exercise. <sighs> and it doesn't make sense. And we're just we're going to get through this quick. Because then she goes back to goes through this backstory, back to story says oh yeah yeah they helped me out and i ended up getting this leg but i have to be under their deal i'm kind of an indentured servant now for four years and i could deal with it rowan yells about his chronic fatigue again and then they just kind of like rowan just still i don't know why you know they're after me then they're trying to figure out who the main person is and they accidentally Backs than these assassins, and one gives the name. I think it's Renata who's the big boss, and because of that, they had a non disclosure pact that now this Baxter's leg blows up, she's dead. I, what's going on in this, Gray? Please, I need somebody to tell me why this book exists. Because I've it's ridiculous. into a nonsense dimension, Jim. I have no idea. Seriously, I read it, I read it through, I was just like, I have no idea what happened. 
No idea. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm at the end already. Right at the end. E- everybody's blowing up because of this. Like, so, so this is where, and I said, this is where I'm going to give you full out the MO of this book and why it means something. You end up where they, where did I know this name? Renata. Never mentioned before. It's the sister of the guy and the daughter of the guy who were brought up earlier in the issue. And that's where Yelena's like, oh, I should have known. Why would you know? Why would you, 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 This is just a character thrown at all of us, including you, mm-hmm. Yelena. But she says, I have to get revenge. Listen, Rowan, this is what that woman, because she sees her picture on a bill. All of a sudden now, every billboard has this woman's picture on it. Like, it says, that woman has attacked my neighbors. This, this is why Yelena Belova, White Widow, why she's in this book, what she's doing, and it is a, a travesty. She says, that woman attacked my neighbors. All right, we got that. She has attacked sharp sweets. <laughs> That's there at the, the candy shop. Oh, also she destroyed beans and jeans, the coffee store. And tonight she killed two promising young assassins for no good reason. There it is. This book is, she ended up, oh my God, this lady ruined a candy store at a coffee shop with the worst name. And two assassins, oh my god, we need revenge And she says, you know what this job is now? This job is for revenge I'm like, this sucks This is so bad It's, it's so, so bad it, I, I'm telling you, I'm trying to get through it this, this has happened so many times this week With these books, and I don't get it I don't understand how these things get past Somebody at a desk I don't know how same, it's greenlit I don't know what is happening, but this is where when people talk about, and I know there's a fight going on, different sides and whatnot, but in general, when people say there's a problem with comics nowadays, that this is why I, I tell people, don't use catchphrases. Don't sit there and say, and I'll even say it, don't say, oh, it's because they're woke. Because one side will use that term, the other side will turn it off and not listen. That word's kind of lost its meaning these days as well, Jim, hasn't it? It's been overused. So yeah, much. what we end up with that, when you say that that type of phrase, the side that is actually producing these comics just gets the, oh, they're haters, they'll never like anything, and they're awful. You're not a cop, because this book, and a lot of these books, it's not just because of that. It's because they suck. It's yeah. because these writers are terrible. And what you're doing by using those catchphrases is giving those people who are writing shitty comics like this, you're giving them an out. They can then just say, oh, they're they're haters. They're awful. No, these comics are awful. Focus on that. Focus. This is the only way this, this gets example, better. This is one of many, but it's, it's been written by people who, who are not comic book writers. They might, they, might be, um, they might be short story writers or, you know, they might have done something else, but they don't know the medium of comics. They just don't get it. And we're not being unfair, are we, Jim? We're trying to, like, explain why it doesn't work. It's just the story's not good. You'll never hear me use those catchphrases. I'm no, here I'm to ashamed. enjoy a comic. And then if I don't, if I do, I'm here to explain why I personally don't like it. It's our opinion, but it's just getting to the point where this whole thing, it's just a tug of war that nobody will ever win because you're just throwing random phrases out that mean nothing to anybody. And all it does is let them, you're giving them an out. You are giving them an out by instead of saying this comic stinks because the character work is awful. There's no setup to anything. You're throwing random stuff at the reader. And then at the end, nobody knows what's going on. That's what you say. And then maybe somebody will listen. They'll still think we're hating. A lot of these people right? don't even read the comic, do they, Jim? They're just like, oh, this is, oh, White Widow, it's by that writer, right? This is terrible. They haven't even read it. They haven't even read it. I wish I had read it, to be honest. <laughs> On the flip side, maybe some of these writers, it's, it, people will laugh, but some of them may come through. One of the writers who wasn't a normal comic book writer, we bring it up a lot, Jeremy Adams at DC, writing some really good comics. There is a possibility of doing oh, it. Yeah. But if you just end up, and, and Elena, me and you both like the character, but immediately we saw it's dealing more with the, the movie deal, so that throws you off a bit. But then it's just a story that, you know, it doesn't matter. It but, doesn't but matter. It, it also just is not well written. Whether or not Sarah Gailey could write a good TV show, comic, whatever, this isn't it. This is bad. The pacing's terrible. It's all of that all rolled up in one, but please center on and go with what is the real problem. The real problem is a lot of these comics are written so poorly 
that I can't see how any new readers could be like, oh my God, I love these comics. It's a shame that newer readers, somebody wants to get in, are going to run into this. These roadblocks is what they are. They're I just know. bad. If this is their first experience of a comic, you know, it's, it's going to put you off. Simple as that. It put you off. Yeah. And again, there's things that happen in this comic that you can look at, oh, it's this, that, or whatever. Don't. Just center on the one thing. Awful. It's an awful comic. It's not written well. And if you're a Yelena fan, if you're away, you're not getting anything that I could think will matter to you in the end. But what would you give this as a score? I feel I don't like to give low scores because the art is the art <laughs> is decent. Yeah, okay. but this, yeah. this is all about the story, all about the characters. You know, the lack of story, really, the lack of character work. I'm giving this a two, two out of ten. See, I want to be a little positive after my rant there. Two point five. I mean, it's bad. It's really bad. Weird science is the revolution.